welcome. Happy to have you guys this afternoon. Well, um, my name is Lindsay. I've met everyone at this point now. I am the director of marketing at Chicago Title. So this is the third part of the series that we've done, um, and this is today is going to be focused on YouTube Shorts. So if you are not familiar with YouTube Shorts, it is YouTube's version of TikTok slash Instagram Reels, right? So it is their short form video content. They have it um, at 60 seconds or less, right? So Instagram, you can do up to 90 seconds right now. TikTok, it's up to three minutes for most users. Some users have the ability to do 10, which I think is crazy. That is not necessarily short form content in my opinion, but um, yeah, so YouTube is at 60. I would not be surprised to see if they extend that to 90, but yeah, right now, 60. Um, and a little bit about shorts is it actually, on Saturday, so in two days, it will be two years old in the United States. So it came out um, March 18th, 2021 in the US. So it's been here for two years. Now, um, it has evolved quite a bit in the last two years. It at first didn't really take on very much because YouTube actually had two separate algorithms. So there was one algorithm just for their standard long form video, and they had a second algorithm for shorts. And so what it was doing was it was saying, okay, the people who watch normal standard YouTube long form video, we're gonna serve all that to them. The people who are watching shorts, we're gonna serve that to them. But at that point, not too many people have caught on to shorts. So nobody was really getting the short content. It wasn't until August last year that they combined the two algorithms. And so that has completely gone out the window and ever since August, it has picked up a whole lot and quite a bit. Um, it right now is at about 30 billion views a day worldwide. It's crazy, right? So 30 billion views a day is how often and frequently shorts is being consumed. Um, and also on top of that, they're really pushing it. So YouTube is pushing, wanting people to use shorts, and I'm gonna show you kind of how we know that. One thing is they have created a creator fund. So they have set aside, YouTube has set aside $100 million um, to creators, and there's like seven countries on the list, the United States is one of them. If there is a creator within uh, the United States who creates enough shorts or uh, videos that are getting enough views, they will award you with money. They have set aside that $100 million to give to users. And there's nowhere where you can go and sign up for this, right? They are just looking at your analytics and maybe I have a video that goes viral and it just gets me all these subscribers and I started as a nobody and now I've got that one video that, you know, got me the extra following. Um, I could potentially get monetized from that and they give you Hundred dollars a minimum is the uh, monthly amount they'll give you, and they will go up to ten thousand dollars, which is kind of crazy. So yeah, they they're really focusing in on shorts right now. That is a big push, as well as they have recently come out and said that um, users who combine the two, who do both long form and they do the shorts on YouTube, those are the people who are getting the best return. And Jill and I can attest to that because there's a client we have been working with. Um, for a bit now, and we have noticed over the last uh, six to nine months, he's really put in the work on both YouTube uh, standards, long form video, and shorts. And with both of them together, complementing each other, he has definitely had direct leads. Not even just like nurturing leads, like they are strict, straightforward coming to him saying, I want to work with you. So it's definitely working, um, and not to mention, YouTube done by Google. So everything that you're giving to YouTube, that is powering the ultimate source, right? That's where 80% of all real estate searches begin is on Google. So if you are help fueling the big Google machine, then that is just gonna help you have a larger presence online. So what I wanna do here is I want to show you guys how we're gonna create the shorts and I'm gonna give you a little bit, some tips about how to navigate this. So there's two apps that you would want to download um, for YouTube. It's the YouTube app and it is also YouTube Studio. So if you have YouTube and you have YouTube Studio, you can optimize your shorts um, to get maximum views. It's, it's kind of a two part where I start and I do some of it in YouTube and then after that I'm gonna go into Studio and I'm going to edit it from there. 
Um, but those are the two apps that you're going to want to have. And also, I'm going to show you, you can also do this on a desktop. So it's not necessarily just the phone. You can also do it from the computer. But most short form video, if you think TikTok and you think Reels, you're doing it on your phone anyway. So that's where we're going to start today. So I'm going to pull up the YouTube app here. Is there anything different if you do it on your laptop? Um, there's a few different things. Yeah. I'll show you that. Okay. Okay. Would like to find connect. All right. That's fine. So a couple things that I want to point out here is at the very bottom, it's kind of hard to see, but there's the, the toolbar at the very bottom, there's the big plus sign. That's what we're going to click on. But to the left of it, there is a whole feed just for shorts. That is kind of the sign that we know that YouTube is really pushing shorts is they've created a dedicated feed just for it. And so you come in here and it truly looks- I didn't know that I was gonna be sitting talk to a, talking to a bunch of illiterate people who don't know how to read. <laughs> but, uh, uh, it works the exact same as it works with way? TikTok, yeah. with Reels, the all you're doing, you're swiping up, right? The, the she told me all the girls in her class were going to get their hair dyed like together and she wasn't just like up to get through the videos. Is that what so I did what yeah. any dad would do and exactly. figure out how to dye her hair. I learned that it was called the bell. Yeah. So that's a little bit loud. Um, but yeah, exactly that. You're just swiping up and it'll take you from the next one to the next one. Notice there, there's ads. So this is another thing is YouTube is definitely pushing it because they're able to easily monetize um, you getting served different ads and that, that's how they're making their money. So works the exact same. You can see on the right hand side, the um, action items, the like, the dislike, the comments, the shares, the remix. And I'm gonna talk about remix here in a bit. Um, that all is working the exact same as it would on TikTok. So they've mirrored and identified what works really well for these other platforms, and they're like, just gonna rip off and, you know, we're gonna copy and duplicate what exactly what they're doing. Um, so I did mention the remix feature. That's a little bit, that is unique to, um, that is unique to YouTube. If I hit remix, what this is going to allow me to do, this is going to allow me to use somebody else's sound right here. Um, so if I wanted to, now that I just turned the volume down, let's turn it back up. So if I was like, okay, this is the sound I want to use, I can hit use sound, and right now it will allow me to record it with their audio. And I'll show you another feature with Remix here in a bit, but that is a quick over, uh, overview with Remix, yeah. Is it the sound from the video or the mm -hmm. like the music in the background? It is the sound from, it could be either or. So, but for this one, like they, he used his original, his original sound. So we're using that particular video's original sound. It's, I guess, this guy, this artist who's hearing his song on the radio for the first time. Um, but if he had overlaid like an actual song, a licensed song on there, it would be using that. Uh, but it's original. It's his original audio. So if you're making your own, because I've never used TikTok either, if you're making your own, do you typically pick music while you're doing your yes. short? I'm going to show you. That's the next thing okay. I'm going to show right here. So that's what I wanted to point out. The fact really is that there is a library on the bottom strictly for shorts that just tells us that they are pushing it. Now if I hit the plus sign, the plus sign, here's another sign. The very top option is saying create a short. So this is again YouTube saying, we'll put this at the top, realize this, right? So if I hit create a short, um, I'm going to have the ability to upload a video that's already existing in my camera, in my library, in my phone, or I can, right now, I could do it real time, so you can do it live, or you can use the existing footage that you have. On the right hand side, 15 seconds, you see at the very top right, it has the 15S. If I were to click on that, it will change it to 60. So now it allows me to do 60, but it defaults to 15 when you start. So if I had it at the 15, and let's say I'm gonna add in a video clip here. So I come in here and we'll just pick a video that I have, we'll click this one, and I hit done. Well, let's say the next one that I wanna do is 20 seconds long, right? That doesn't fit, but that adds up to 24 seconds, and at that point I've been capped at 15, so what's unique about YouTube Shorts that the other apps don't allow you to do is mid-editing, I can click that button at the top right and I can go to 60. 
Whereas the other apps, well, Instagram does, TikTok does not. It does not allow you to, um, oh, sorry. Um, it does not allow you to change the timing while you're midway editing. So that's something to note at the very top right. The add sound. So you see that add sound button at the very top? This is YouTube's licensed library. Their library is going to be different from TikTok. It's going to be different from Instagram. For the most part, you know, your top trending, top 40, all those big hits, they're all going to live in each library. But this is specific to YouTube. So if you were to have a video on TikTok and you're like, okay, I want to have that same video, put it in um, YouTube, the audio won't transfer with it. You're going to have to use a licensed song in TikTok. And then when you come over to YouTube, you're going to have to do a licensed song there, whatever um, they have available to you. But like I said, for the big hits, um, it's going to, they're going to all be in there. It's hard to see, but um, underneath the artist's name, it tells you how many shorts have been used with this particular song. So the, the Miley Cyrus one right there says 622 shorts, 622,000 shorts were created with that particular audio. So it allows you to see, if I hit see more, this is going to allow me to know what's trending. Um, there's one in the middle, it's called Calm Down, that says 1 million shorts have been created with that. Right underneath that, 1.4 million. So I want to try to gravitate towards music that is trending right now. If you click on it, will you tell you what it sounds like? Yeah, it's so if trend. I were to click on this right now, <coughs> it'll give you a preview. And you're like, okay, this is what I want. Or you're like, nope, this is not what I want. So then I hear it and I say, okay, yep, this is the one. I can hit the arrow. Another thing you can do right next to the arrow is a bookmark. Maybe I'm like, well, I do like this sound and I want to save it for another time, but maybe not this particular video. So I can hit the bookmark to save it for later. Um, but let's say I decide yes. I'm going to hit that. And now you can see at the top, the song Calm Down has been selected for this particular clip. So it will allow me to use this clip. Um, because I changed the timing up to 60 seconds, now I have a longer bar, a longer um, amount of clips that I can throw within there. Like I said, I can continue to film live right now, or I can pull out another video in here. So if I come in here, maybe I do this one. And now, let's say I don't want the full 2.8 seconds of that video, I can trim it. I'm gonna take my finger on that little uh, bar at the very bottom, and I'm just trimming it up. So I only want it for 2.5 instead of 2.8. And you right? can trim the front or the end of it? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, exactly. So there we go, I've trimmed that, and I can just keep adding in as many clips as I want until I get to that 60 second threshold. Um, let's see. So if you're choosing music, are you not gonna be talking in your video? Good question, um, I will show you that. Okay. I'll show you that soon. Um, all right, now let's, I'll, I'll add one more clip in here just to have something else. So this one's kinda long, this one's 10 seconds. Um, I'll trim it right there. Okay, done. So let's say those are the couple clips that I want to put together. Um, I want to go over the toolbar on the right. Very similar tools to the other editing app, or Instagram and TikTok. The top, this one is flip. So that would basically just flip the camera. Do you want the front camera, or the back camera? The next one is going to be your effects. So just fun little things to make it look cool. The next is your speed. So a lot of the times, if you were doing a video like showing off a home, people tend to kind of do a, a longer pan. And to be honest, sometimes that pan is a little bit too long. So what you can do is you can speed that up where you're capturing the full room, right? But if you put, do it at two X, then they can kind of see it quickly, move on to the next clip because our attention span has got really, really short. Whereas we used to be able to watch a 60 second long clip, but now it's more like 30 seconds is what people are gravitating more towards. Um, so yeah, so there's the one X, or if you wanted to do slow motion of someone falling down, right? You could slow it down to half or um, a, a third of whatever that speed was. 
that, get is, that. Is that only on live video or um, do you go no. to one of your so friends? if I were to, let's see, uh, let's just throw on live video. Like the videos that you've added. Yeah. So on here. Those. Okay. So not on YouTube. No. So that is going to be just on Instagram. They will allow you to do that. <coughs> uh, right below your timer, if you wanted to go hands free, uh, below that is your green screen. So I always enjoy having a green screen behind me. I can put whatever um, clip behind myself. So this one is just my confirmation booking for my tea time. And I can, uh, you know, whatever is going on behind me, I can talk about that. Um, you can also do a video behind you. So maybe you've got like a video that you're walking through of your house. You can also put your face on there while the video is going on behind you. It doesn't just have to be an image. How do you put the video? Wait, can you go back to where yeah. you clicked on green screen? Yeah. So um, I hit. Which one was the green screen? Um, it's like a, a silhouette of a body. Oh. Fourth one. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So if you want the right green here. screen and a video behind you, how do you add the yep. video? Yep. So you're going to click on the green screen button. And then it's going to pull up all of the photos that you see in your uh, photos and videos in your camera roll. So I can come in here and I can choose whichever one I want behind me. So if I wanted this one behind me, okay. And okay. now Got I it. can talk about what's going on. Mm -hmm. Just don't move too fast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, so that is the green screen. The next one is retouch. That's just to make your face look a little bit more airbrushed and pretty. For yeah. the green screen one, when you selected the clip, it was like yes. three seconds. Yes. Are you able to do multiple clips without having to change the Like if you... Can you green screen overall? I see what you're clips? saying. So like if you're doing like a pan of, you know, the entryway, the kitchen yep. and whatever, are you doing three separate ones or can you upload those videos and then you're still three green screen? Ones. Okay. Three separate ones, yeah. And that's how the other apps are too right now. So it's almost better to like somehow shoot it live. Yeah. Yeah, break, put it all together and then do it do after like one time. Do like a 2x and then do it, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next one, filters, that's pretty similar. So right now, let's say if I were talking right now, um, I can hit, see that ghost kind of at the bottom? If I hit the ghost, that's going to tell me where I last left off. So I can align my face. It's called align. Ooh, I'm not really that good at this. But I know my hand was somewhere. Oh, funny. <laughs> here, right? Ish. Oh Ish. my gosh, I'm so bad at this. But anyways, it's basically to align yourself where you last were and then pick up from there. That's what the little ghost icon is. So that's if you've ever seen people when they have an outfit on, they jump and then they're in like the next outfit. It's like, how did they get right back so to So they where stopped they it were? and then ghosted and came back. Exactly. Exactly. So that, yeah, that little ghost icon is the align. So it shows you where you last left off. Um, keep going down. Lighting, that's just to make it look brighter um, while you're filming. Trim. So trim is if I wanted to at the end. Okay, so I've got all these clips together. Do I want to trim all of them? Do I want to move them around? So I can... You can choose which clip to trim here. Um, and yeah, those are basically kind of your, these are just enhancements on how to kind of make your video a little yeah. bit more, I don't know, cohesive. Make it all come together a little bit more. Um, not super, super important. So if I hit the check mark at the very bottom, I like all of this together. Um, now, this is where, if I wanted to do a voiceover, if you want to hear me talking rather than just the music, this is where you can do it. So right here at the bottom, um, there is the voiceover button. I can click on that. And so if I wanted to talk about this house is three bedrooms, four bathrooms, 2,500 square feet, right? So if I'm talking about that, here, I'll actually do So this. when you had you in the green screen, mm -hmm. you're in it, but you weren't talking at that point? No. Uh, on this one, no. I but you could, talking. instead of doing a voiceover. Correct. Or, this the one I was talking. The more if you weren't physically in it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. But it shuts the music off? No. So oh, I'll okay. show you that. So, um, all right. Three bedrooms, four bathrooms, 2,400 square feet. 
right? Okay, so that part of what I was just saying, and that's picking up from my phone microphone, that is going to be just for this part of the video. So I hit okay, um, and then we'll get out of there. Now, when I go over to volume right next to it, I get to choose, all right, I want my voiceover to be the loudest. Um, original sound is whatever sound it picked up when you first filmed the clip back, look, I filmed that last week, so um, maybe I want the music a little bit more faint, right, so you can hear me a little bit clearer. That's, this is where you kind of control. Choose what goes where. Yep, what's gonna be the loudest to the softest. So what is, what category is your voice when you were in the picture? Is that considered? What you mean, what the green screen. When you were, when yeah. you were in green screen, which, which? Oh, that is going to be um, original sound. But if you were talking in the green screen, you wouldn't be doing voiceover because you'd already be talking. Correct. That's original sound. Yeah. yeah. Because, because original sound, because I was recording it live, so that was, that was the original yeah. sound. So, yeah. So you might, you know, as long as you didn't have a lot of other background noise that would muddle the rest, you might, because only that one clip that you were talking in, you might be talking over the rest of it, so you'd leave original up. Because mm -hmm. this is only for the full yep. video, you Correct. have those choices. Correct, exactly that. That's exactly right. Um, okay, so that's what volume is. I like this next button on the right, timeline, because timeline allows you to see, all right, let's say I want to throw some text on here. Um, yeah, I see a lot of them that the it's talking while you're talking. Like it's type, it looks like it's, it's doing all the words while you're talking. Does that make sense? Like the whole thing gotcha. says okay. what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Yes. So yes. Can, do you have to manually do that? Like you have to manually type so in the there, whole entire conversation? Um, no. Other apps. So yes, there's other apps where you can add that in there automatically. And it kind of is like Siri. When you're talking to Siri and yeah. it auto-translates that. Um, if it was Instagram and TikTok, they will actually translate that for you. YouTube Shorts does not have that yet. YouTube, YouTube does. <laughs> normal YouTube does. So it Got will it. come. It will. But you can type in, where did you go to start typing? So it? there's um, right here, text. Okay. So right here, when I click on text, it allows me to put um, whatever I want to type. It allows me to change, you know, the fonts. So this one would say this Saturday. So you can tell kind of the difference between the two different fonts right there. And does um, the text stay up the whole time? Well, so when I hit timeline, I get to choose. So maybe I only want it to be for the beginning, right? Both of those. I only want them at the very beginning, and then it's gonna go away. Um, so right here, this is kind of nice because it's showing Show me, picture. all right, this is what part of the video that it's gonna be stopping at, right? Got it. So it's nice to be able to visualize this. This is, this was actually, YouTube was the first app to do this, and then the other two apps, they picked this up from YouTube, which YouTube has never kind of been the leader in can the you say something profile? different at the end, or can you only yeah. say something like You can do as many. You can so, do as many of these as you'd like. Mm -hmm. So where you were kind of waving, you could go, see you Saturday. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um, maybe I'll do that. So I'll put this all the way at the end. So there's my wave, right? And yeah, I can edit this and say, see you Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Three right? So that's going to be only up for the beginning. And then you'll see as it gets to the end, when I'm waving, that's when this See This Saturday will pop up. Um, but while I was talking on that green screen, that was original audio, and I had turned that down, so that's why you didn't hear it on there. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, these at the very end, those are just some additional features that you would use to overlay. I would say the first round of features I showed you with the toolbar on the right hand side, um, those are just to enhance the the visual of it. This is to add, uh, like, to alter the audio and then text overlay on top of that. And if you were doing it for work, you could like put your branding on there at the end, just whatever your company yep. name number, whatever. Yeah, because let's say you had um, just a single image graphic of your headshot, logo. your logo, your contact information, that could be just like an image that you threw in at the end and let's say you had that up there, you chose to have it up there for four seconds, right? So you could do a video and then at the end of the video have a still image? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically what I would have done is, let's see this part added. Basically a I would have added another um, clip at the very end, yep. 
But it can't be, it would just be like a separate clip at the end. It wouldn't be like you could put it as like a little picture on your. Correct, yeah. Uh, all right, so now let's say this is all good. I hit next. Now this is my last step. There's a few things I want to touch on here. Now, all right. So here, this looks very similar to same user interface as TikTok as uh, Instagram. It allows you to put your caption in there. It's hard to see, but there's a hundred character limit. You can only do a hundred characters, so it's very short. Um, this truly is your title. So if you've done YouTube videos, you know that there's a title and then you know that there's a description, right? So the title is what people see when they're scrolling through YouTube, trying to pick out what video they want to watch. Description is once they click on it, they're able to read what you have to say about the video and that's where you're putting a lot of keywords into. Um, so same thing with this. The title is going to be what people are going to see. So you want it, it's limited to 100 characters so you can't really say a whole lot, but this is where you're gonna want to try to grab people's attention. You can't create a description in YouTube. You have to go into YouTube Studio, which is why I said you want both apps. Um, you can create your description in YouTube Studio, and I'll show you that after the fact. But right now, that is what the title is for. Um, on here, now this, what they have allowed us to do now, this is new. So this actually was originally only available to Android users, which is kind of different because usually Apple gets it first and then Android gets it. In January, they allowed Android users to be able to pick what part of the, cl uh, of the clip is your thumbnail. Now, TikTok and Instagram, they allow you to upload your own. So separate thumbnail. It's separate thumbnail. And that's what we're, I'm crossing my fingers. I think YouTube will get this soon because you have the ability to do that on long on form video, yeah. right? So why do they not have that yet on short form? Well, for whatever reason, it's taken them this long to allow you to pick, you know, whatever. Uh, well, I'm not likely it. to want to open up Canva and make a cover sheet for a 60 second video. <laughs> I do. I have a template, right? So I have a template that I use, and I just interchange whatever like the big bold text is. So, it so kind would of you suggest sense. using the same thumbnail for every single video? Not the same thumb. So you, I kind of would do maybe a same template and same branding, but not necessarily the same thumbnail. You want the thumbnail to speak to whatever this is. So right. I might have a just like a high resolution image of the front of the house. And then I would overlay it with open house this Saturday, 318, right? And so um, that's going to vary from the next video. But yeah, so what I want to point out here is right now you can pick whichever part of the video you want to be your thumbnail. But again, it's not going to be a high resolution image. So what I've actually read that some people are doing to kind of cheat the system is they are putting what they would want their thumbnail to be at the beginning or the end, somewhere within the video. Yeah, put it and in the then, end and then you go scroll. And then I it. can just say, okay, if that was if that was what I wanted my thumbnail to be, right? And then I have that static high resolution image already embedded into my video, and that's that's kind of the workaround that people are doing right now. So like you could put like your logo and contact it yeah. at the end, and then. Or maybe not. Exactly. Well, that that would be to, to you were not going to use like that as your image because yeah, you want right. your image to be. A lot of people are doing it at the beginning. Yeah. A lot of people are doing it at the beginning. Just like a real. The the, th th the the thumbnail, like the workaround for the thumbnail. Yeah, just having it up there for this one. This is a second. disaster. Yeah, <laughs> you know how that goes, right? All of those crazy thumbnails. Yeah, I don't see myself right. doing those crazy faces and stuff. I'm sorry. You just don't. <laughs> I thought I didn't film it. <laughs> Alright. You won't so, be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's say this is the one that I want. I hit done. So now that is my thumbnail. Um, the only couple other options that it has is public and private. I'm going to put it as public. Is it made for kids? No, this is not a kids related thing. And then your comments. Right? Do you, this is the default that I always have ours at is to hold potentially inappropriate comments for review. I've never actually had to have somebody, or I haven't had to like check them ever because people have never left anything inappropriate on us. Um, so I can decide, I'm going to put, 
All right. Uh, save draft, or am I ready to upload it? I'm going to hit save draft for now. Um, and now that I've done that, let's pretend I did publish it. I do have one published to show you. Now, this is when I want to go into YouTube, uh, YouTube Studio. So now I'm going to go into YouTube Studio in here. And this is where I can come in to an existing, anything that's been published, anything that's gone live, I can come in here. And this is a short that we did. Um, I'm going to hit that pencil icon at the far top right. Um, there's a pencil. <clears throat> so now there was that title that I input that I showed you you could do up to 100 characters. But now it lets me to do a description. Whereas if I were uploading it strictly on the YouTube app, it doesn't allow you to, to do the description. On YouTube Studio, it does. So this is where I would come in and I would create a longer, you know, summary of what this video is about. And I'm going to make sure that I'm using keywords in there that um, people, like this video would pop up in the right people's hands. Because I talked about this last month, um, the three parts of the algorithm. The first part is your title, your keywords, your description, making sure that those are created appropriately to where the content is being fed to the right people. Um, because if I were to write in this, this description, if this is about title and escrow, that's very misleading. Because when someone clicks on the video, it's not about title and escrow, and then people are likely to leave. And at that point, it's hurting your retention rate. So the second part of the algorithm is to have the longest amount of retention you possibly can to get them to watch from start to beginning. And like I said, if you are feeding content that it's to somebody and they get there, they're like, this isn't what I searched for, this isn't what I was looking for, they're gonna leave and it's gonna hurt you. Um, so that's why I say in this description, make sure that it really talks about what the video is about um, and put as many keywords in the description that you think people might be searching for. So I might wanna do um, Scottsdale home for sale, open <coughs> house with pool, whatever, things that really describe what this is. Bless you. Oh, um, so keywords go here. And this is from a, a draft or is it this one you've So this is posted. already published. Yeah, this was one that I had published previously and I purposely didn't do anything with it because I wanted to show you guys. So um, when I plug in YouTube Studio, a bunch of stuff shows up, but nothing that looks, I haven't found the one yet. The right that app? looks like the right app, yeah. Let me see. Yeah, this one. You. The first two I clicked on were not that, so that's why I'm like. Are you showing you which one it looks oh, like? Yeah. Oh, there it is, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. What color is the logo? It's red, well, and it's like kind of a, is it a uh, hexagon? Or? Hexagon with an yeah. arrow in the middle. Um, also, so additionally, it allows you to put tags in here. So at the very bottom, what I did is I went to the bottom where it says more options, tags, categories, comments. I can now put my tags in here. So maybe I do Scottsdale home for sale. When you do comma space, it it's like enter. Like, yep, I submitted this one. Now we'll go to the next one. So open house in Scottsdale. And remember, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, uh, one word. It can be a phrase. So Scottsdale. Oh. Is there like a recommendation for how many here? Yes. Um, so the amount, it says, so I've read a couple different things, but what I've gathered from multiple sources, I've kind of narrowed it down. The median is about seven, seven to 10. Some I've seen, some people say up to 15, but I've seen some people say closer to five. So I've kind of narrowed it down to seven to 10. Tags. Tags, because to the point that I said earlier, you don't want to like confuse people and say, oh, this is about this, right? And then they get there and they're like, wait, I searched for this and this is not what the video is. So really narrow it down within 10 keywords, like this is what this video is about. And this is what people are gonna be searching for. Now in the last class, I showed you guys um, Tube Buddy, yeah. and that was a really good tool that will kind of tell you 
based off of what um, traffic is being searched on YouTube right now and you know what keywords are ranking really well, it will kind of tell you these are the best options. What is that called? TubeBuddy? TubeBuddy. Is that yeah. an app? It is a Google Chrome extension. So if you use the browser Google Chrome, um, it will populate that information for That'll you. That'll work on mobile Chrome. I was going to say, can you use it with shorts at all? Well, so what I do, what I do is um, they have a SEO tool. TubeBuddy has an SEO tool. It is a paid feature of theirs. What I just talked about, that was a free feature. SEO tool is a paid feature, and so I think we pay. Ooh, we paid. It wasn't a lot. sixty bucks for the year. Yeah, it wasn't a lot. Whatever it was, it was super cheap. Um, and so there's an SEO tool where you can do all your research beforehand, and then you save it as draft. And when you come back to it, it will allow you to um, input all that information. Now, I don't think it would work on the mobile app because, well, I'm not using Google Chrome, but um, I haven't tested using Google Chrome browser on the app, right, on my phone. I haven't tested that yet, but you yeah, can go into you can go into the desktop and do it there. So I'll show you that next. Okay. So question for you, because I've never done any of this on Instagram to talk anything. If yeah. you make a video here, yeah. Can you put it on your other platforms or do you have to do it separately? Separately. Um, so, TikTok, right? So if I were to start on TikTok, I create a video. It gives you the ability to share it to Instagram, but Instagram hates that because what happens is there's a little TikTok watermark at the bottom that says the person's username. Instagram's like, why are you promoting our competitor? No, you're going to get less reach on how many people are viewing your video. So I always tell people, I like to start in either Instagram or TikTok, whatever I choose, but usually Instagram. I create the video there. Before I hit publish, I download it. Save it. I save it because if you save it before publishing, it will save without the watermark. As soon as you hit publish and you try to save it afterwards, that watermark is attached to it. So you so, save it and you can go pull it. When you go on here, you can just go in your saved videos and it's already exactly. done. From your camera roll on your phone. Yeah. So that's exactly. always, as soon as I hit publish, the You're step done. right before that, I hit download. So it saves everything that I've put together. It's going to save all the clips compiled together. It's going to save the text overlays I've done. The only thing it's not saving is the music. Because remember, each app has its own licensed library. So it doesn't take the music with it. If you have original audio in there, it will take that because that's yours and you own whatever you're talking, right? So it will take the original audio, but it will not take any music audio. So, um, then I will take that compiled full entire short or reel or TikTok and I'll go into the other app and I'll throw it in there and I'll put a licensed song from their library and I'll put it on there. Because that, it really saves you a whole lot of time so you don't have to do it multiple times. And each, each platform has its own audience. So yes, you could get some repeat audience, but for the most part, you're gonna reach a different audience on each platform. But Instagram and Facebook are basically the same thing. Yes, so, so about that. correct. But there's no watermark for Instagram, is there? There is now. Oh, there, there is? used to not be. Oh, there okay. used to not be, but there is now. So if I were to go on to my Reels and I were to try to download them now, they do have one. They used to not, though. So this is a really dumb question. I've what? never posted on any platform. I make a video talking about, let's just say, interest rates. Okay. And I press publish. Who's that? Is that just going to randomly pop up to random people? Like, I've never done anything before, so it's starting from like nowhere. Like, so who's that there's, a couple, up for? there's a couple things. So, um, <clears throat> well, it depends on what app you're using because what it's going to do is Instagram, for example, and I'm sure the other apps do this as well because Google actually started this technology, is they scan the content. Like, they have little robots, whatever, bots, um, that are scanning the content, and it's identifying, okay, she's talking about interest rates, we're going to serve this content to people who are watching other mortgage-related videos, um, and then also we talked about like the keywords, putting the right keywords in here, yeah. um, and putting the right descriptions in there, it's also scanning that information, and so if I'm someone who frequently looks at Scottsdale Homes, 
this could potentially show up in my feed because my browsing patterns have trained the algorithm to know what I want. Because so let's say next day my dog's name is Cash, and yeah. so I use some in online marketing. Let's say the next day my video has my dog in it. Yeah. Is that going to be a completely separate audience because there's yes. a dog and that robot scanning it is going to see a dog yeah. and maybe people that look at dogs yes. for it? Exactly. And so the goal is... The people you captured from your interest interest rate video, you want to provide them with enough valuable information to where they subscribe to you or they follow you. So that way those same people can see cash the next day. But if they decided they watched the video, it wasn't as valuable as enough to go and follow you, then they might miss out on cash because cash is a different category, right? right? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And what if they just like the video? Is that going to serve them up my videos in the future? Yes. Yes. So I, if they take any action on your videos, um, and also if they were to sometimes, if you watch the full duration of a video, that also is kind of like an action item to where then they're like, okay, well, you started watching so the you're full, really, you're really like getting into her stuff. So then. So if they go them. and you said subscribe and they see I've only done two videos in my life, are they going to be like, why the hell am I describe or subscribing to this? Or will they not even know that I I mean, at that point, maybe because they're like, I don't know what other type of content she's going to be putting out. But you have to start somewhere, right? right. And yeah. so you got to start building that library. So at the beginning, yes, they might have that thought. But after you've got a library of five, six, seven, then maybe they're like, okay. Is there a way to, I mean, I'm really old, so Facebook <laughs> is like my go-to. My kids make fun of me. But is there a way once you start doing this, which I'm going to, that's why I'm in this class, to go to like your Facebook page and go, hey guys, I've got a YouTube, go subscribe yeah, or how do you? Absolutely. Okay. I'm actually going to show you a okay. way that you can tease people to pull them in. Yeah. Okay. Um, on the, pre the page before this, you, it had a playlist. Um, is there any benefit to it? Like, is that on your YouTube channel or is that like a shorts? playlist or so you mean add to playlist yeah yeah so you can choose so whatever playlist you've set up on your YouTube channel as a whole um, I can choose so these aren't necessarily just shorts right these could be long form okay. they could be a combination of the two um, it could be I could create one that's just for shorts. Just short, you get yeah. to choose but um, this all of these right now I know they all have long form in there so if it's related to this particular playlist then I might want to put that in there okay Mm -hmm. So, is is a valid connection to do shorts that lead into the long format, and so that you're kind of because the shorts are an easier fishing thing right yep. now, right? Yep. So that's actually. So if I'm going to do a video on the buying process, and mm -hmm. you know, step one is four minutes. I'm talking about well, you need to call your lender, and you yep. need to get pre. And, and so then I do a short is like, why would you go to the store with no money? Find out how to get, you know. Yeah, whatever right. it is, it's kind of that hook. That's a really good point because I, I do want to talk about how you can take existing videos and you can make little teasers of them. And um, that, well, those it, are called, go ahead. Go ahead, no, finish your I was going to say, they have ones that are called clips and then they have the remix feature, which I'm going to show you that as well. This is the problem with that though. The, yes. So, I, and I was watching a yep. how to create for more recreational because I'm yep. looking at RV stuff. So, and he's like, so always make sure you're in the middle third because then you can clip yeah. it out and make it short. Well, that's really, <laughs> exactly because I'm going to If you're going to, you know, use your face on it. Yeah. But I've always been told to do portrait mode. Yeah. So, you so you're, so square. But not for YouTube longs. So, yeah. so yeah. some people also recommend square. Like, because you can upload a square video um, on shorts. You're going to have the little black lines at the top and the bottom. I personally, that, that, that wouldn't be my preference. Um, but, and then you can also upload square to long form too. That's one way that people do it. I would suggest if I, in the perfect world, is you have the editing apps that allow you to convert from horizontal to vertical, right? Because those aspect ratios are complete opposites. 9 by 16 to 16 well, by you, 9. Well, yeah, you're always going to so, lose some portion of your Yes, body. but there, there's some apps that will kind of help you morph it as best as it can. Um, I think that's your best bet, but the, that center that center tool is a, is a to film in the center, right? 
Um, that's a good example. Let me show you. So really Put quickly, on your phone so you know where you are. Okay. You guys now see that we created the video and uploaded it into the normal YouTube app. The only thing I use YouTube Studio for was to put in the additional keywords, the description, if I want to add it to playlists. It just has a little bit more advanced um, behind the scenes to pair with it to kind of help that SEO. So that's the purpose of doing it. When you YouTube started video. this, was there something that you did to for them to know that it's a short, or are they just going to know that it's a short because of the timing of it? Like at the very beginning? No. I'm well, so remember at the beginning I hit the plus sign, and then I said I want to create a short. Got it. So that was okay. it. Got it. Um, so where it's going to go now, I'll show you. Let's go back. I'm yeah, so when you're on YouTube. So when I'm on YouTube, yeah, the, there's a couple places it's going to be, right? We, there, there's this whole feed at the bottom for shorts. This is, it, it could go in here in this feed. It also, within my library, um, I'll show you what it looks like on, well, there's a whole feed right here. This is actually not just my stuff. This is everybody's stuff. There's a whole feed for shorts here. Um, on the side when you're watching a video they have shorts there's a few different places of where it goes into um and i'll like i said i'm going to show you guys the desktop version too i know i'm going a little bit over is that okay yeah, i've good. got a couple more things i want to show you it shouldn't be too fast or too long um right now i want to show you how to do a little teaser and you could share it to an external platform so if i click well, actually, let me show you. Joan, you're my example. Did you know? <laughs> All right. So here is her a video that she's talking about farming tips. She is being filmed in the center. So if I were to hit this button, Remix, there's a button right here that says Remix. What it's going to allow me to do is you could do this. I could do this. It's public. Anybody can hit this Remix button. When we uploaded this video, we gave permission. Um, one of the options was, yes, people can remix my video and use it. Um, not, the, not the editing as a short, but the sound. So people can, I can use Jill's, watch this. My farming. Oh, watch this. <laughs> no, let's see. Oh, but we can help you identify people. Like whatever, I could like <laughs> lip sync to whatever she's saying. Did you also know that we can give you phone and email addresses for those consumers. <laughs> Right? So I'm using her audio and so that was that was something that we gave permission that public can use our audio for this because why not allow, because um, if someone were to watch the video and they click the little audio button, it will direct to our long video. So it's like why not allow somebody else to share our audio and try to get more views on it. Um, also, let's just start over. I can hit remix for us, not the whole public. I can say, let's edit this into a short. Let's take the full video and we're going to make it into a short. Um, I want it to be as centered as I can, right? So it's a good thing she was where she was standing. But now you see, right, the rest of it gets, mm -hmm. cut, off, gets cut off. So that's a disservice. But I might just say, all right, let's just do, well, let's just do that for those consumers that we can help. Right? So this is my little teaser. Is I'm just doing this piece. I hit next, and now when somebody watches this, they then, um, there will be an option for them to watch the entirety of the long video too. They can click through to that. So, let's head so to the long short, the long short. The whole video. Correct. The whole thing Correct. short video. So when people click on it, um, and they, let's say they're going to click on this short, they can then come to our library and then they're able to watch the whole version. is that what you were saying that you could no go so that's out? clips so this is remix okay. i'm going to show you clips clips will then do a direct directly to it i was going to say that doesn't bring you directly to the long form no. of that video this is just they would have to find it kind of do it themselves there is a direct way though let me so that's remix but we can um, and that's that button right there. Now let's go to a different clip. Did you also know that we can give you phone? And it might not be available on the phone app, so let's see. The last time she taught this class, I was wearing a shirt. Here we go. <laughs> so here, some of them allow, some of them, uh, we have the option to do it. So clip, you see there's, well, I did remix already. I showed you that one. Um, clip, 
is similar, where I can take um, up to 15, maybe 60, yeah, you can do up to 60 seconds, up to 60 seconds of whatever full length video I want to do, and I'm going to say, why is it not letting me do it? Basically, test. Um, and then I want to do a share clip, right? So now I'm going to share it, and it's going to create a whole clip. And now I can say, I want to share it on Facebook, right? So I'm doing a little snippet preview, and it's then going to go to Facebook. And when people click on that, it will take them to the full length video. Um, there is not a place within YouTube where you can share your clips. Kind of like how we were saying with the short, if it would direct to the excuse me, long form video. Um, there's not a place for clips in YouTube. It's kind of weird. Clips so, are going to be for externally off. Which Facebook doesn't like you going off their platform, so yeah. they're not going to... But for me, at this point, I would rather get the reach on YouTube because it's powered by Google than caring more about Facebook's... Wait, you, what did you say? You can post it so on Facebook, so I can... When you post external links on Facebook, Facebook tends not to, their yeah, algorithm is going to put you down. It doesn't like showing external links. Yeah. Which I don't really care. I'm just targeting my initial, oh, here I'm going to do YouTube now to my whole friend group. That's right. really but what I'm... But you kind of care because Facebook doesn't like that you're bringing your people off Facebook to YouTube, so they'll suppress your video. Yeah. So, so you might do I mind, do I, mind, do I maybe just want to text, hey, go check out my YouTube yeah, channel? Yeah, you may want yeah. to create a separate yeah. video and yeah. post it on Facebook. Yeah. But then they have to like manually go to YouTube and manually click. Well, you would just say, Go visit my YouTube channel. You could say at well, your user. Type it out. Don't use a link. Can, it, there's not a direct link, so you're not driving traffic away from Facebook and upsetting Facebook. But they can go into Facebook and they said, okay, her username is at whatever. I'll check that out. And then, okay. It's a double-edged sword. You can't really please everybody, it seems. <laughs> Um, so that's the that's the clip. Like I said, clip is trimming it, sharing it externally, um, and then when people click on it, it will direct to your full video. So why was that one allowed and the other one wasn't? Just I think it, I fun's had, blowing I up because somebody just found my Instagram and they're liking everything I've ever put in there. Oh my gosh! Um, I think the settings when I had uploaded that particular video, I may have accidentally clicked off. Yes, you can use this as a clip because um, you get to choose. Do I want to allow people to use this as a clip? Do I want to allow people to remix this and use my audio? If you have that option in your settings. So I kind of always ignored the remix because it seemed like that was maybe the same person that I did the foot the thing, but it could be third party altogether that does the remix, just putting different music to it. Mm -hmm. That's what more, more than likely happens. Yeah. Or is there an advantage to doing your own remix just to have it show up? Yeah. Places? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I think that's the biggest advantage. I mean, yeah, maybe some people will use your audio. It depends on what you're saying, right? Um, I've just seen some weird audio. So you, you say you're old because you don't understand these plans. I'm old because I'm watching all these RV things because I've got one foot on that I want to retire in a few years and one foot on that I still want to do real estate for yeah. a few years. <laughs> yeah. No, that's totally and That's the ones who do all the remix stuff, it seems. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to show you guys. Any questions on doing this all on your phone? Now I want to just show you quickly, because we already went over this, but I was going to show you guys what it basically looks like on the desktop. So you can also do this on the desktop, but a lot of the times you're going to already have the footage on your phone, so that's why I started there and that's why I showed that mainly is because that's where you're going to be. However, um, I want you guys to see, oh you can't right now. See, right here, there's a, a button that's just for shorts right underneath home. That's another way that we are able to tell that they are really pushing shorts, even on the desktop version. It's right there at the very top. Um, yeah, so it looks the same where you kind of scroll through, you go just like it was on the phone. It's just, you know, uh, horizontal now. So why are those popping up for you? Like, why are these particular shorts? Um, 
You know, I'm not really sure because I don't really. <laughs> I was going to say on, on, uh, Chicago police. Right? <laughs> yeah, on our, um, I did actually watch one of his like full ones, and so now I'm getting all of his. Okay. Um, I guess maybe because I watched him singing earlier. Now they think I like other singing right videos. Yeah, right. It quickly, it quickly learns. Like, if you dislike something, does that eliminate you getting that stuff again? It doesn't. Like, it's not that you're being mean. You just don't want to watch that kind Correct. of content maybe? Correct. Okay. When, but there is analytics that the creator can see um, how many people disliked or liked it. <clears throat> um, back to home. So that's, you know, to, to browse and to uh, do that. If I go to YouTube Studio, oh wait, actually this is YouTube Studio right here. Um, I can also on all of my content. I get analytics on, you know, the last short I did, I come in here. This is where I can do the description. Um, right now, like I said, you can't just upload a thumbnail. It was just selecting what frame of the video you were gonna use. Uh, if you wanted to put it in your playlist. So all the same features that you would get on a standard, um, standard video you're uploading. Here's that TubeBuddy thing I was talking about because I am in Chrome right now. It is suggesting different uh, keywords that I should be using. Paradise Valley, or this was a, a tour of a home in PV, a nice, a very nice luxury listing. So one of them is Mega Mansion. And that's <laughs> just because they have seen other people searching for Mega Mansion and that's a trending keyword that they think would relate well to what I content I've uploaded. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit more advanced editing features through YouTube Studio as I showed you on the phone. This is just if you viewed it um, through the desktop. So where would that uh, draft be? Um, I don't know. I should be in here because I thought I saved it as a draft. Did I save it as a draft? I think you did. I thought I did too. Let's see. Library. Go back. I don't know if I did because it's not. I've got a few short drafts in here, and that one is not it. So I maybe didn't actually save this. But it would save in your YouTube versus. But it would be right in here. So this one. Um, Yes, I know this is a short. So on the desktop, it doesn't really decipher whether it's a standard YouTube video or a short draft, right? Mm -hmm. But on my phone, it does show me draft. which one, the drafts, which one is normal, and then here, which ones are short. It does show me that. I prefer to do it all, um, like I said, on the mm -hmm. phone. The thing I do like about doing the desktop is because I use Google Chrome, I do see that TubeBuddy extension, so I'm able to kind of play around and see what keywords are trending. And then, so maybe I were to create everything on the YouTube app, and then when I decide to do YouTube Studio and do a little extra with the title, description, and keywords, maybe instead of the YouTube Studio app, maybe I come to use Tube Studio browser. On so the you desktop. go to YouTube Studio to add the description before you post it. So when After you're on posted. YouTube Studio adding that, then you go publish from YouTube Studio? No. So you publish directly in the YouTube app. So you created it, you put it together, you hit publish, it's done, and it's there. It's live. Then you immediately now, go to Studio. I go to Studio, and I can add in descriptions and keywords. So and you I, want to do it right after, otherwise it's going to be out there published yeah, without this. Without having that extra SEO to help Got fuel it. it. Yep. But exactly. if you save as a draft, can you come and do this and then uh, publish it? Let's see. I probably And can that. you schedule it? Let's see here. Does TubeBuddy automatically so pop up when you're on your desktop, or is that something that you have to yeah, subscribe okay. to? Um, TubeBuddy is a, a Chrome <coughs> extension that you have to install. So yes, you have to do that yourself. Um, so it does look like, this is a draft right here. This is not published. Um, mm -hmm. It does look like I can come in here and I can put all that information in before it's even published. And can you schedule? Um, I don't think so. I don't see a schedule thing. I don't think so. So 
But you can just save them as drafts and then do all that and yeah. just post it. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't when I see people on FaceTime, not FaceTime, Facebook doing videos, is there like a Facebook video app itself? So Facebook and is owned by Meta, and Meta uses Instagram. Um, okay. So those two talk to each other without getting yeah. that. Yeah, so pretty much all videos now, whether it be Facebook or Instagram, is now uploaded as a reel. Got Regardless, it. actually, of the duration, um, if you upload any sort of video, it's just going to categorize it as a reel, even though reels, if you're creating a reel in the app, it has to be less than 90 seconds. It's very confusing. Any other last questions? Thank you very much. You're welcome. So are you dealt with tr having uh, you just have to do two different subscriptions to TubeBuddy if you have two different YouTube yes. channels. Yes, exactly. Because every time you slip, switch over or the other, it doesn't show up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do I have to go create a YouTube channel to do any of this? All mm -hmm. this? So yes. I, like go to YouTube, tell it something. Yep. Like, register type thing. Yeah. So um, if I were uh, to. Class one. <laughs> we missed. Yeah, yeah. So you do. So if you. Because it's owned by Google, if you have a Gmail account and you were to come in, um, I don't. Okay. Well then, so then I just go onto YouTube and register as something. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So create a channel. And I may have asked this channel. last time, but what do I? I mean, uh, old videos. Do I do, do I clean them up? Is it is there value to leaving them out there mm -hmm. somewhere semi hidden, or do I just make them all non public so they're not to be seen? Well, I would say. I mean, I, it's been, I, I haven't done much in the last year, so most of them are at least a year old. Yeah. Right? So do you, did relevant. you get, like, a traction on them? Because if uh, you did, I would leave them. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I probably, yeah, I wasn't really doing all the other things to get traction to them necessarily. But yeah. I did, you know, market and houses and, you know, ish, ish, house, you know. Yeah. So, just. You could also, um, I find that when people create playlists, like whatever videos are in playlists tend to kind of outperform non-playlist videos. So you could leave them and then the stuff that's in the playlist will kind of outshine and people can at that point overlook some of your older stuff and you can still have it there if someone wanted to view it. But if you have other stuff in playlists that will kind of outperform that, if that makes sense. Do you find that, I mean, is there value to mixing in uh, personal stuff in your real estate one just so people know you're human and, oh, I, I like to go hiking, I like to do this um, stuff, some of that. So that it. actually is, that's, a lot of people are talking about that because that's what you want to do on Instagram and all that, right? right. So um, on shorts on YouTube, it is possible to do that now because people's YouTube shorts are so short, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas on a YouTube video, they were so long, so no one's like, I don't want to watch four minutes of your you personal life doing, job. yeah, right? Like creating, maybe. Well, creating like for instance, I wanted to do a series of you know, because I'm trying to get myself out and hiking. You know, yeah. go do a series of different hikes around. But I think Scottsdale. that 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 is actually more not personal that's more like community lifestyle well, so that is something right, you absolutely right. want to do because yeah. that and that's where we've seen success hey, for a lot of agents home, you know, is like it, yeah you can talk about the education uh, the education of the home buying transaction and all that but what i think people are more so interested in is what is it like in arizona yeah, right yeah, that's more. So, yeah, that's gonna get you more views because that's just more interesting, right? Yeah, I'm not gonna film myself sitting on a couch watching TV at night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but if you were doing a short, like you could put in some personal stuff. Um, I think. But that's more what I'm thinking about. Just you know. Yeah. Make my dog be a star of the hikes. Yeah. And, you know, going yeah, out absolutely. And hiking various hikes around here. Mm -hmm. And just remember, um, one thing that I I've read a few times now is that YouTube is really. They have just come out and said that people who are doing both the long form and the shorts, Different pairing that ranking. together, that's how, that's the people who are thriving the most from it right now. So another thing on your to-do list. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> if you had to pick one, I'm not saying that, would you rather do YouTube with yes, shorts yes. or like Facebook or Instagram? I think it depends on your audience. Um, 
But I right now, I've seen more people get success on YouTube mm -hmm. Shorts at this point. And 